praise your name, Jesus. All right, thank you for joining us tonight live. Um, shortly, we're going to have Jackie. He's going to be bringing the word to you. And uh, we, um, we are in a trying time. We're in a challenging time. And this is a time to not sit down or turn back, but it is a time to press in and press on. And we got to stay, uh, stay the course. And, um, you know, uh, there's preparations to be made. I was reminded yesterday morning uh, about uh, when Joseph was um, uh, a young man and he had dreams. He, he had a heart for God. He had dreams, told the dreams that got him in trouble. But the thing that the Lord reminded me of was that the famine still came. There was a famine that came in the land. And it was there for seven years. And in that seven years, God gave Joseph the exacts of what to do and how to do it to sustain himself and two nations during that time. This is a time that we need to be open to the Holy Ghost. That we need to hear by the Spirit the things that we need to set in place and do now for, for the future. And, uh, you know, the, the men of wisdom uh, that are uh, looking at numbers and things, they are telling us that we have not yet felt uh, the, the, uh, the trauma of our economy, that we've not felt it, that we're going to feel it in the future. And so my advice to all Christians is to, um, is to prepare yourself and be prepared uh, because our God is still the Most High God. Our God is still the, 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 the Most High that's above every name that is every name that is named. Amen? Amen. And we've got lots of prayer requests tonight. Jackie's got a list. I've got a list. And um, if there's anyone in this house that you've got someone right now, it's the time to, to express that because we're going to go right down the row and we're, we're fixing to enter in and pray. Because the Bible doesn't say sitting around thinking is what will move God. No. It, it doesn't say that wishing and hoping for something will move the hand of God. But it says that we've got a tool called prayer. And prayer changes things. It does not change God. But it changes things things and that's what we are going to do you say well you know maybe they're out living in sin well let me tell you this the God that I serve when Jesus walked this earth I never saw a time that he stopped to say well how righteous are you how you been doing how you been living are you in church are you paying your tithes are you doing everything right he just healed them you hear me I said he just healed them and so we're serving that same God that he's a loving, caring father, that he wants to take care of his children. Amen? Amen. And you know what else? He said, if you'll just be faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many. And that's the God that we're serving. How about that? And so tonight, um, I, I'm going to start with the first prayer request uh, is for uh, Nick and Brandy Smith. And uh, they've, they've got some things out before them that they really need our prayers. Um, and, uh, you know, God knows everything. Yes. Amen? Amen? God knows everything. And if there's anything I know about this, God, we sang about tonight. He's our protector. He's our deliverer. He's our finance. He's our friend. He is all those things. He didn't go off somewhere and leave us stranded in this, uh, in this pandemic era. But I'm telling you, he is God to his children. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. We're going to pray. And uh, um, you want to lead, Jack? What we're standing on is the blood of Jesus. Yes. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. We're the church of the living God. He's given us promise that if any... Two of you agree touching anything through the righteousness and the blood of Jesus, then he will answer that prayer. Yes. He will hear. He will answer. So we're not coming begging tonight. No. We're coming on the strength yes. of his righteousness and his word. 
to let these petitions be made, made known before heaven and get the work done tonight. Amen. Amen. Father, we just Smith, praise you right now, Lord. We just Hello. lift up uh, the, uh, the Nick and Brandy Smith household. And Lord, we thank you for the protection of the word of God. We thank you uh, that there is no weapon formed against them that can prosper. We thank you that you hasten to perform your own word. We just thank you for that promise, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for the blessings of obedience. Lord, they have been obedient vessels. They have uh, traveled uh, uh, far uh, to carry your gospel and to carry your word. And I thank you that you said that if we be faithful over a few things that you make us ruler over many. I thank you for the positions that they are set in. I thank you for the blood of the Lamb. I thank you, Father, for the word of their testimony. I thank you, Lord, that their testimony is coming forth. And Father, I thank you by that testimony they will be able to lead others to the cross. And I thank you for that, Father. Holy and Lord we pull down every stronghold that will try to exalt itself against this family in Jesus name in Jesus name Lord we decree health in the house Lord I pray health for those babies I thank you for it, Father. And I pray, yeah, right there. I thank you for that. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for breaking the binds of the enemy. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory of the Lord of the Lord of the Lord of the Lord Right now, in thank Jesus you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, and then also, we've got uh, Andrew Wilder. Uh, you know, when he was a teenager, and I was reminded of this when he was a teenager, he came here, and um, and the Lord gave me a word for that young man. And uh, and I'm telling you right now that the devil's a liar, and he's the father of lies. And uh, I know this that God not God's not done with him. Do you hear me? I said God's not done with him. God hasn't changed his mind about the plans and the purpose that he had for this young man. And uh, he's, uh, he's in National Guards and he had to be sent out this morning to, uh, to go into where this, this uh, trauma is and all these uh, protesters and stuff. But I'm telling you, I know a shield of righteousness. I said I know the shield of righteousness and so right now I want us as a body of believers I gave him scripture to stand on and, and to speak over himself before he goes out every morning but I tell you right now I, I believe that unified prayer availeth I said the prayer of the saints availeth much and right now in Jesus name Lord we lift up Andrew Wilder before you and we thank you Lord for the power of the blood we thank you Father and we praise you I said the ambushment has to break up in the name of Jesus. Father, we come against that spirit of defiance. We come against the spirit that would want to come and defy your name, Lord. And Father, even as little David came against Goliath, Lord, we stand in the power of the admonition of the power of the living God. And Father, right now we pray protection around this young man in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we decree and declare it and call it done hallelujah and I'm going to say this to those of you who have uh, families that are, are having to go to work and that stuff and families uh, that are out there listen don't sit by hopeless uh, but you get your hope in Christ uh, and you begin to pray over them uh, and you begin to speak God's word over them uh, and don't, don't you shy off from the word but you stand strong in the admonition of the word in Jesus name Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then the third thing is our city. 
We want to pray protection over our city. They, uh, we had some of that ruckus trying to go on at our courthouse. Uh, and, uh, and I'm going to tell you this. I believe if there's laws and things that need to be changed, and they need to be changed. But crime is not a way of changing laws. And that crime is crime. And that's what that is. And, uh, and so we need to lift up right now our city and our county to lift it up into the heavenlies. Lord, we lift up our county and we lift up our city before you, Father. And we thank you for our city officials. Lord, I ask you that they be led by wisdom. That they be led by wisdom and knowledge, Lord. That they not be led by what might be a good thing, but it be a God thing. And Lord, I thank you and praise you for protecting our city, Lord, and protecting our county, Lord. And we claim it on this globe. We claim this county on our globe, Lord. And I thank you for raising those warriors up by the gospel, Lord, not warring by the flesh, but the warriors by the gospel. And Father, we thank you and praise you and we declare it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And then uh, the last one is I want us to pray for Jessalyn and Jim that uh, they live over in Maumelle. And uh, tonight there's a, uh, the curfew is 8 o'clock. And it's because there's supposed to be some stuff going on over there. And I'm telling you right now, I serve the, I serve the risen Savior. And I believe, I believe that, that when God could cause Jesus to go through a crowd and they couldn't even see him or find him and they were going to drag him out and stone him, but it wasn't his time. And when it's not your time, I'm telling you, you stand strong on that word. If it's not your time to go, then don't pack your bags and get ready to go. Unpack them bags and make your mind up. I'm going to live until my day comes. Amen. 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 So right now, let's pray. Pray for Maumel and and Little Rock, our 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 sister city here. And in Jesus' name, Lord, we just lift this up. We lift it up before you, Lord. And I thank you. I praise you, Father, for the gift for the gift of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the power of prayer. And Lord, we pray protection. We pray protection, Father, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you for the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name. Jesus spoke to the storm. We agree that the storm over these cities is calm. We speak peace to this storm over these cities in the name of Jesus. And on a bigger scale, we speak peace to this nation. Lord, that you be working in your Christians, in your believers, in your followers, that they be calling upon you and speaking peace over their cities and this nation. And we give you praise for that. Yes, Yes. thank Thank you, you, Jesus. And uh, I'm going to give you this one scripture and I want everyone to write it down and you need to speak it over yourself every morning before you leave your homes. And it's Jeremiah 119. And what it says is, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. And get that word, get it out, get it in front of you, and make sure that, and I'm going to say that again, it's Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 19. Say that out loud, Jeremiah 1, 19. And, uh, and you pray that over your children. You get that word out. You get it over your, your families, your friends, your relatives. Because again, I'm going to say, we are in a trying time. But so was Joseph, and they were kept for seven years while everybody else went hungry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to lift up uh, my brother, Joe. Uh, he just got back out of the hospital, had pneumonia and uh, some hernia surgery. And I want us to pray protection over him. Yes, Father, yes. To you, Joe, right now. Thank in you, the Lord. Name of Jesus, and Thelma. We thank you that you're the God of all flesh. You're the God above all and in all. 
Thank so, Lord, you. we ask you to his body. We speak strength to his body, to his immune system. We speak recovery, recovery from that pneumonia, recovery from that hernia situation. And we, Lord, ask you that you cause him to speak the word over his own body, that you inspire him to speak the word over his own body, just as we all do. Lord, and I want to, I ask you, Lord, to, to give him that understanding so that he can do that and stand strong in his faith with you. And I want to thank you for that. And for my cousin Woody, Lord, I'm asking you to have your hand on him that he's dealing with blood situation. And I ask you, Lord, that there be a clearing in his body, that there be a, a cleansing, that there be no complication, and that there be healing flowing. And Lord, let the revelation of Jesus Christ yes. be before them yes. and us in yes. a greater way than we've ever known before you, because thank it's through you, the Jesus. name of Jesus that Hallelujah. we have victory. Yes. And I want to yes. thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' yes. name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I've got a... Are there any requests that any of you have now? Okay. Hallelujah. Shelly's attention. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, um, I know the, the Lord gave us a name for this church many years ago. I was actually attending another church, and, um, and I, I wrote it down. I, 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 don't, I couldn't even tell you what was going on at that church because the Holy Spirit began to minister to me and, and give me um, what, you know, about, about raising this church up because I had always said, uh, you know, I, there's no way I'm ever going to pastor a church I, because there's a church on every corner and uh, pastoring is one of the hardest jobs there is in, in uh, the ministry, I believe. You know, evangelizing, you just go in and let them have it and go on and leave, leave them there with the pastor, you know. But the, this old, it's an old song. It's a very old song. And, um, but you know, Jesus is my lighthouse. I was in a dark place and I saw a light. A light of salvation, a light of healing, a light of deliverance. There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. And when I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might clearly see. The light that shines in darkness, it will lead me safe, Leon. And if it wasn't for that lighthouse, tell me where. Say, tear that whole lighthouse down. 
could clearly see and I thank God for that light hills oh I thank God for that light hills you know I thank God for that light hills that stands upon the hills kept you to this point he is gracious and merciful he has given continual protection all that you've been through and now he wants to lift you up even higher into his grace into his mercy he's giving you an understanding just receive that light just receive that understanding and let him be the Lord of your life as he so desires to be. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you receive that word, just say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is doing the work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we submit to you right now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for your spirit for your word, for giving us Jesus, the Savior, and for enlightening us and leading us in ways of deliverance and ways of overcoming and ways of goodness and in your way that never fails. So we submit to your ministry tonight. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Amen. Amen. Let's raise our Bibles up. This is my Bible. It is God's holy word. I am who it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. Thank God. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Barbara and I have not consulted about what I'm preaching tonight. And I don't think she peeked at my notes either. But the title of our message tonight is A Time of Preparation. I had one thing cooking in me for about a week, but then uh, something was said or done this afternoon, and uh, it just it changed. This is a time of preparation. Yes. And Barbara mentioned uh, some things about preparing for times ahead, but I want us to focus just for a few minutes on the preparation, the spiritual preparation because if we get the spiritual preparation right, then we can hear the guidance and the leadership of the Holy Spirit to do those things that we need to do or not do those things that we don't need to do. So I want us to get the understanding tonight about spiritual preparation for the times ahead. Now, Peter... Uh, he knew what it was to betray the Lord. He was with the Lord for about three years, three and a half years, following Jesus, hearing his teaching, uh, participating in the ministry. And then there came a day when Peter, because of life around him, distanced himself from the Lord and ended up betraying and denying him. Yes. But did you know Peter 
repented. Truly repented. And because he did, and, and to repent means simply to change the mind, to turn around, to change the mind. Because he did, God was able to fill him and use him to get the whole church age off and running. To start the whole church age on the day of Pentecost. So Peter went through some preparation, and I want us to, to look at what he wrote. I want to look at his life a little bit and see how God worked in Peter to prepare him for what was coming. We're talking about a time of preparation. And we are in a time of preparation. Yes. You know, there's some preparation going on. Jeffrey let us know that, I think it was yesterday, he was preparing some businesses for the coming demonstrations and possible riots by putting plywood over the windows. Preparations need to be made for bad times ahead, okay? But there also needs to be preparations made for good times ahead. Because actually, in this tumultuous time that we're in, of all the stuff that's going on in the world today, this is actually the time for the church to shine. But for us to shine, we are going to have to be in the right position with God. Amen? So I want us to look at that. I want to start with 1 Peter 3.20. 1 Peter 3.20. Peter writing to the church. And here's what he said. It's just a short thing I want to refer to. It'll take us somewhere else. 1 Peter 3.20, which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a-preparing. And that's what stood out to me. While the ark was a-preparing, was a wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. Now, we see that Peter knew about the ark and he knew about Noah. He knew what happened there. So let's just go back into Genesis now. In Genesis 6, 5, let's turn over there and let's see what that says. While the ark was a preparing. Genesis 6, 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And in my margin, continually in the Hebrew says every day. Every day. All man was thinking was evil stuff. Does that sound familiar? You know, we've got media today so that we know what everybody's thinking. And it's only evil continually. And that's the way it was in Noah's day. And verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace... In the eyes of the Lord. You know, I have a definition of grace that formulated over a period of years, actually. I'd get another revelation of it and then another revelation of it. And over a period of years, and finally it, it became a, a long definition. But I want to give it to you uh, because if we can read into the word grace when we, when we read it, you know, a lot of people say grace is just unmerited favor. Well, personally, I think that refers to mercy. But that's good, too. Un unmerited favor is in grace. But it's a lot more to grace than just unmerited favor. The definition I have is grace is the unlimited life, power, gifts, and abilities of God 
imparted to man to enable him to do all that God has called him to do. That's the short version of it. But grace is an impartation of who and what God is into your life to enable you to do things that God is calling you to do. This message is about getting prepared. It takes grace to get prepared. It takes an impartation of the wisdom, direction, and ability, and gifts, and understanding of God if we're going to properly prepare for what lies ahead. And that's what Noah found before God was grace. Okay, that grace was demonstrated. Let's read on. In verse 9, Noah was a just man and perfect, or in the margin it says upright. He was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Are we walking with God today? Okay. The operation of grace is where we walk with God, not against God. Not questioning God, not trying to hear God, but walking with God. Grace will enable you and I to do that. Verse 10, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. God does not like violence. He does not like corruption. And God looked upon the earth, verse 12, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Verse 14, make thee an ark of gopher wood. And he started giving Noah specifications on how to prepare for what lies ahead. And that's exactly what pastor has said tonight. And that's exactly what the spirit of God is prompting us. Make preparations for what lies ahead. So he started building that ark. He and his family. Look at verse 18 of that chapter. And I'm not going to read through everything, but we're going to touch on some things. Verse 18 of chapter 6 of Genesis. But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Let me tell you something. The covenant of God is for every family. And we need to pray that way and believe that way. But let me tell you something. Every son, every daughter, every grandchild is responsible before God to repent and get right with God. It's not a free ride of somebody else's faith. But somebody else's faith, grandma, grandpa, father, mother, friend, you can put your faith out there for households and God will be working in that person's life. But they are still responsible personally to repent before God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Noah was dealing with a household. And as it works out, the grace of God operating in Noah's life, his household was saved. That's the kind of grace we want operating. Amen? Amen? We want to be praying for our family. We want to be lifting them up, speaking the word. We want to be praying for each other, for the preparations that's laying ahead. You know, I I realize that Jesus said in the last days it's going to get so bad that it's going to be your family who turns against you. The sons, the daughters, the grandchildren, and whoever. Family is going to be turning. So you see... There's promises extended, there's opportunity extended to every person, every family member, but it's still up to every family member to get right with God. Get prepared. Get prepared for what's coming. Your end might come tomorrow or tonight. So we're responsible, each one of us, before God to be ready 
for when our time does come. Yes. Amen. Amen. So looking at Noah, we see that God was establishing a new order. And he gave Noah explicit directions on how to prepare to leave one order behind and enter into a new order. I'm persuaded to believe that we're on the verge of a new order. And we're going to see that in Peter's writings here in a minute. But we've got to get ready. We've got to get ready. You notice I started out by talking about Peter's being with the Lord and then denying and betraying the Lord. But he repented. And I want you to keep that in mind because repentance is still in order for each one of us today. It should be a way of life for each one of us today. And I want us to see that. Let's turn to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. You know, I don't want to keep you a long time tonight. But maybe I can be like Lisa. She says, I ain't got much for you. And then 45 minutes later, <laughs> when she says, I ain't got much for you, I thought, oh boy, we're in, we're in for some good stuff here tonight. That's good. <laughs> First Peter. First Peter chapter 5. And we do get good stuff from Sister Lisa, don't we? It's wonderful. I praise God for the anointing on her, how she can put that word out there to us. First Peter chapter 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. That's a good word right there. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of people, they, they could take that to heart. But anyway, yea, let all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Let's review that definition of grace again. God gives unlimited life power, gifts, abilities. And he imparts that to you to enable you to do all that he's called you to do to enable you to get ready in the way he's calling you to get ready. That's grace. So though God resists the proud. If you got it all together and you don't need to repent, mm, you're putting yourself in a bad position. But if you are willing to admit your weakness, your shortcomings, the wrongs, where you're in error, and turn from that, then you have all grace, the unlimited life, gifts, abilities, the power of God imparted to you. Got to get ready. So he said, God giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. God wants to exalt you. He wants to lift you up. God, through the abundance of revelations, wanted to exalt Paul. If you want to make a note on your notes there, you could put... 2 Corinthians chapter 12 about Paul's thorn in the flesh. It says clearly there that through abundance of revelation, Paul was to be exalted. But you know what? Satan didn't want him to be exalted the way God wants to exalt people. So he, he caused constant resistance to Paul so that he would not be exalted. See, God, we just read, wants to exalt you in due time. Lift you up, give you revelation, give you power, give you abilities in order to get ready and to do what he's called you to do. And he was doing the same thing for Paul, but Paul had a constant resistor called a thorn in the flesh that was sent by Satan, it says. And Paul sought the Lord three times and the Lord revealed, you know what the Lord revealed to Paul? I didn't know we was going to this place, but it is in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Paul, re Paul received a revelation of the all-sufficient grace of God. 
He received a revelation of the all-sufficient, unlimited life, power, gifts, abilities, and power of God that was imparted into him to enable him to accomplish all the will of God in his life. And you read after Paul and you found out that's exactly what he did. He said, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I have run the race. I've done everything God called me to do and I'm ready to go. He was prepared by the grace of God. He went through some opposition. But in the midst of opposition, he learned to draw on grace that exalted him, that lifted him up, that empowered him so that he is still winning souls by the millions to this very hour through his writings, the Holy Scriptures. Now that's the grace of God that you and I have in the Lord Jesus. We need to have our understanding enlightened to allow that grace to operate without any limitation. And the only way we can come to that understanding is through repentance. Turning loose of what we believe. Turning loose of what we hold dear. Turning loose of this tradition, that tradition. Turning loose of my way of doing things. Turning loose of me and embracing only Him. That's what ushers us into the glory of God. That's the preparation that God is bringing into us. So let's look at this. Peter writing this. Remember, this is the man who followed Jesus fell away from Jesus for the time of denial and betrayal. And then he repented and came back and God used him in a great way. And Peter also is still winning souls by the millions through his writings. And he's given us the formula on how to be prepared even in the face of failure, personal failure, how to be prepared to be used by God mightily. That's what he's showing us right here. Verse 7. He said in verse 6, Humbling yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Casting all your burdens, your anxieties, your failures, your faults, your sins, Everything that's a burden and a care to you, casting it upon the Lord. Is that a one-time experience? No, it's a lifestyle. Walking with God. Noah walked with God. That means it's a walk of casting those cares upon the Lord, looking unto Him, humbling oneself before Him so that He lifts you up in His power and His understanding. Not living by our mentality, but living by our contrite spirit pastor two Sundays ago gave us a scripture in Isaiah 57 Isaiah 57 about God who inhabiteth eternity Isaiah 57 and it said in that passage that God dwells with those who are of a contrite spirit and that's a crushed, crushed to powder. Crushed to powder so that you just are blown away. There's no strength in you. Your only strength is God himself. That's who, him who dwells in eternity, that's how he dwells with you. Walking with the God who dwells in eternity. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. So, verse 8, he said this. So, beloved, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. We have an adversary, but we, through the grace of God, can understand his devices, we can recognize his devices, and we can overcome his devices. And they overcame him 
by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb, and they loved not their life unto the death. In other words, they didn't hold to their natural life. They held to the word. They held to their testimony. They held to the cleansing blood. And that's their overcoming power. That's our overcoming power. Is our testimony in agreement with the word, speaking the word, the blood cleansing us from sin, and not holding or going by or observing or living by our natural life? I know when I had my, my back problem, and I was down and out with that, and I was declaring that word daily, for two weeks and for I was ready to declare it for two years if it needed to be because I, I, you know, there was no way out. But in two weeks, that word took effect and just set me free from that back condition. And it's that word of the testimony, you know, that, that I had to hold to and I, I gave that testimony to my back. And I didn't stop. You know, just kept on going. And it manifested. And if that's the way we can obtain, a, one way to obtain a healing, then in our life in general, when adversity comes to us from every, even if it's COVID virus or rioting in the streets, whatever adversity, or, or if it's in our own mind, whatever, then it's that same principle as what he's saying, cast your care upon him for he careth for you. It's that same operation of grace that we can overcome all things. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And you know, it just comes to me. I see in my mind, I see uh, the way the devil knows who he can devour is as somebody who's stuck up like this, walking around in our own strength and pride and our own ability and our own intellect. You're a target sitting up there. But if you're down low with your humility before God, he shoots over you. You've got wisdom. You've got the power of God working for you. So verse 9, the devil, whom resist steadfast in the faith. You know what steadfast in the faith is on our face before God, looking unto him, humbling ourselves before him so that he lifts us up in his power. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, but the God of all grace, but the God of all ability imparted to us, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, here's the end result. Make you perfect. That means complete in the Greek. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Keep in mind, this is Peter who had repented from betraying, from denying the Lord. This is Peter who realized that, hey, this grace will... When you submit to God and humble yourself to God, you might not know how God's going to fix it and how he's going to straighten your mess out, but he'll do it. And he will establish you and make you complete and whole in the way that he wants you to be. Strengthened and settled. Amen. So this is a man speaking from experience on how God can do this for you. Now let's go over to 2 Peter. Second Peter, the third chapter. We, we started out by kind of looking at world conditions uh, in Noah's day. And we see that's much like world conditions today. As we know around here personally, even in our own city. That's why we prayed for our city and our region tonight because it's being affected by what's going on in the world today. Well, Peter tells us that there's, it's going to happen in a, on a large worldwide scale again. You know, we've had world wars. We've had things come up. We've had national calamities and things. But the pandemic today is a global thing. And the, because of media and uh, information is transmitted so quickly, 
what's happening in one place can immediately be known. So if, like we've seen, if a police officer kills somebody over here, the whole world sees it. So the same thing that got inflamed in that region now gets inflamed worldwide. So things are happening on a global scale today like never before. And as the evil was in Noah's day, it's happening again today on a global scale. Remember, we're talking tonight about a time of preparation. A time of preparation. It's important that we all be prepared. 2 Peter 3.3 3, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. But these people are willingly ignorant, Peter says, and uh, for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water were by the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. That's what happened in Noah's day, and Peter's saying it's happening in this day. Verse 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. Not willing that any of us should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see, Peter knew how to repent, and he knows the Lord's operation for deliverance in our lives down through the ages is repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation, that is behavior, in all holy behavior or conversation and godliness? looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now here's the preparation that God is working in our lives. You know, as I, and we're going to start with verse 14 in a minute, but as I, as I look at the events going on, the thought occurred to me, I thought, you know what? This is really happening. This is not a storybook written by George Orwell, 1984, or anything like that. This is not science fiction. This is not prediction. This is what's actually happening. And it caused me to think, oh boy, you know, I want to get everything in my life right with God. Because not only do I not know my personal time, but I also don't know but what he might split the eastern sky. I just learned this past week, graveyards are put in there. Y'all were talking? Graveyards are put in gravestones facing the east. I didn't know that because it's said that the Lord's going to come from the east. Well, the whole world is geared for the coming of Jesus. So it's time for us to wake up and get ready. He could actually come because it's a mess on the earth these days and it's getting worse. So this is what Peter's talking about. Verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. Don't be slack. Don't be, don't be a slacker on this. Be diligent that you be found of him in peace with God and with all men, and without spot and blameless, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. 
So Peter is pleading with the people, with believers. He's writing a letter that we have in our hands today, pleading with us, hey, the Lord is coming. And I mean, the, the earth got washed away the first time, but this time it's going to get burned up and it can happen at any time. But there's a spirit of scoffing. You say, ah, it's always been this way. It's not going to happen. That's where we as believers need to humble ourselves before God. Say, Lord, I believe your word. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Even to the point of being blameless, even to the point of being all holy conversation, all holy godliness, whatever it takes, Lord. I want that grace operating in me, that ability, that life, that power that's unlimited. I want that grace operating in me so that whatever we're facing, we'll have the wisdom, the direction, and the preparation that God wants to have for us. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So what Peter, what Peter presented to us is what we can have today if we'll take it. Humbling ourselves before God and allowing His grace to fill our lives. The same power that overcomes all things. I included something here that I want to share with you. You know, in pre preparation for what lies ahead... Uh, we need to be standing on the Word. And if you're taking notes, I want to just give you some references in closing. Some Word that you can stand on for preparation. And here's what I'm talking about. We need to be prepared in spirit, soul, body, family, finances, socially, eternally. There's seven realms of life that I've come to see. But that's good, good talk. But what word can you stand on to be prepared in spirit? To be prepared in spirit, write down Romans 8. It starts out with talking about if we... Those who walk in the spirit have no condemnation. But if you walk in the flesh, there's condemnation. But Romans 8, be prepared in spirit. You read Romans 8. To be prepared in soul and body, put down Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Speak that word into your life. In faith. Speak it into your life. I, many years ago, I learned about pray reading. Instead of just reading the word for information, you read that word, and as you read it, you take it in for yourself. You, you put yourself in it. You apply it to yourself. That's for soul and body. And uh, there's, there's more scriptures. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you can put down for family Exodus 12, 2. Psalms 89. And uh, finances. Romans 13, 8 says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. So Lord, I want to be debt free. In preparation for the coming times, I want to be debt free. Lord, you said in your word, owe no man anything but to love one another. So, Lord, I speak that into my life. I don't know how you're going to do it. I'll give myself to build an ark if I need to. But whatever and however the grace is, I say, Lord, I want to be debt free. Romans 13, 8. You can also put down 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. That talks about how Jesus is, and his grace See, there's financial freedom. Grace includes financial freedom. That was 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. And the last thing I'll give you is prepare 
making preparations for eternity. You remember Jesus said, uh, and this is in Matthew 6, 19 and 20, if you want to write it down. He said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, not where the, raw, the rust and the moth corrupts it. And then in Psalms 2, 8, it says, ask of me and I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance. What is the greatest inheritance for a believer? Is to have souls laid up in heaven that the grace of God operating in your life laid up those treasures. So there's preparations we can be making, but it's going to take humbling ourselves before God, taking the word, applying the word, walking with the word in application of the word so that these areas of our life can be prepared. Amen? Amen. Well, that's all I want to share with you tonight. Otherwise, it'd be two or three hours, you know, for all the stuff that I saw in association with that. The message is simple. Get prepared. Humble yourself. Let God impart grace to you, and you will be prepared. Peter is testimony to that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we just submit to you right now and we commit ourselves into your hands for this word to operate in us, that you confirm your word in us with signs following, with grace operating. And we want to thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. And if there's anybody listening by live stream and you don't know Jesus and you're not prepared for what lies ahead, if your time comes tonight then I want to invite you right now to open your heart to the Lord and ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Submit to him, cast all your sins upon him, cast all your goodness, cast all your life upon him. Say, Lord, my life is in your hands for when my time comes and for now in the present time. Give him your life by faith and he will treat you right forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah, everybody stand up. Uh, Judy uh, asked for prayer a while ago, and I told her we'd take care of this later, and I won't do that right now. Uh, we're just a family here, and we support each other in uh, our needs. And your request was a closer relationship with your daughter and your son okay well see that's good because we all we all desire that in our families father in the name of Jesus I lift up to you Judy and her request right now uh, her her children she desires that relationship with them we do ask you Lord right now to work in their lives by your grace and your power Draw them unto you, draw Judy closer to you, and let them all meet together at the foot of the cross and the power of God. And Lord, we speak blessing upon that household in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask for our, all of our households that this grace, that we be prepared in this grace so that we can be uh, supporting our households wherever they're at, with you or whatever, so that we, Lord, we stand firm with your goodness toward them and your mercy toward them for their salvation in every way. And we give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for your blessing? All right. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the, blessed in the field. I'm blessed, I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to, God causes it to prosper. Our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. 
I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I am full, filled up, and running over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, and nothing broken. And we give honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.